Yesterday, we looked a little more in detail at these four faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and how the imbalance in these faculties exists. All the vices and all the virtues that come from a human being are within these faculties. The human being needs to strive to bring an equilibrium and balance in himself or herself. We have looked and given examples at how these shahwat, these carnal appetites in man cause his or her destruction. We looked and saw how things like alcohol and drugs, the reason why Allah has made them haram because they anesthetize and numb the aql. It is for mankind to allow the true king to come and sit in the seat of the kingdom. The qalb, the heart, which takes advice from the aql as the vizier in the human being. Now, what we do not want to bring across or anyone to mistaken is we are not saying to not enjoy the things that Allah has given us from our shahwat that drive us to certain things. The key thing is, as we gave the story yesterday about the man who had to carry the donkey, is to make us not be in control or controlled by our animal self, but to be the master of our animal self. When you see on TV rodeo riders in the United States, when they ride those wild buffaloes and bulls, jumping up and down and finally they get thrown off. This rodeo bull is like the nafs. The human tries to tame this wild beast. Imam Ali salam uses this very example in Nahj al-Balagha where he says the, the one who has manifested the true taqwa has controlled and mastered his steed, his horse. He has tamed it and is in control of its reins, not the other way around. When we talk about this nafs, the nafsul ammara, this nafsul ammara, its nature is that it doesn't differentiate between halal and haram. Now, all of you or most of you are probably thinking that I can differentiate between halal and haram. Yes, mentally you understand the difference between halal and haram. But when faced with temptation or desire, when we act to follow, this is the nafs that doesn't differentiate. It sees what it wants and it goes for it. It doesn't differentiate in action between halal and haram. This is the problem with the nafs al -ammara. Now, what is it if we want to go further to see what it is you and I are battling with? There is a beautiful hadith from Imam al kazim alayhi salam. He says, Jahid nafsaka. Strive and struggle with your soul. Litarudduha an hawaha. To repel it and defy it when it comes to its hawa. Hawa, we normally translate it in English as the desire. Fa inna huwajibun alayk. The Imam says, Fa inna huwajibun alayk ka jihadi aduwik. For this is obligatory, wajib upon you, just like the jihad against your enemy. So what we see is the Imam has highlighted that you and I are battling with this hawa. Let us go to the Holy Quran and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about this hawa. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, 
لا تتبع الهوى A direct injunction to you and me Where he says do not follow your hawa Do not follow this desire This illicit and illegitimate desire from the soul Clear injunction from the Quran Elsewhere in Surah Nazi'at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here gives a definition of the one who will attain Jannah. He says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ And as for the one who fears the station of their Lord. Now what type of fear? We're not talking about fear the way you would fear in watching a horror movie. We are talking about that fear due to the magnificence and greatness and jalaliya and severity that Allah has in and can deal with us. Because of our own wretchedness, that element has to exist. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ Number one. Number two. وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى The one who fears the station of their Lord and they repel and refuse their soul from its desire, from its hawa, then indeed Jannah is the abode and the destination of this type of person. So we clearly see the battle with the hawa, the repelling and the defiance is a key element that needs to be put in the human being in order to attain paradise. Yesterday at the end of the lecture, I mentioned to you a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. We said our holy Imam, when he wanted to define a Shia, he said, In the Shia to Ali, the Shia of Ali, Man Afa Farjahu wa Batnahu wa Shtadda Jihada, the one who protects their private parts, which means their sexual desires, their stomachs, and they are intense in their struggle. Wa Amilu li Khaliqi wa Raja Thawaba, and they only work for their Lord and they desire and have hope in His reward. So if you see these kind of people, this caliber, then these are the Shia of Ja'far. The Prophet said, Inna Ali wa Shiatihi min al Indeed, Ali and his Shia will are of the victorious. Today, you and I take this hadith and blanket it all over the entire one who is labeled as a Shia. One who is born with the label Shia. Take you any. Bismillah. Faizin take you. From the victorious. But we have to look and see what is the definition of Shia. Shia literally means follower. We have many incidences in the lives of our Imams. When people have come to the Imam knocking on the door. Imam opens the door. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Ya Imam, this group will say, we are your Shia. Imam says, where? I don't see them. And shuts the door. These people had come from far and wide to see the Imam. They were shocked. They camped outside the city the night. The next day, they sent somebody to see the Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Oh. Imam, the guy comes, opens the door. He says, Imam, these people had come to see you. They're shocked. They're upset. They don't understand. Imam says, let's go. Goes to this group of people. He goes to them and they say, Ya Imam, Imam says, look, you told me that you are of my Shia. My Shia have marks and signs on them when I look at them. 
They have the signs of ibadah on their faces. They have the signs of ibadah on their bodies. They are the ones who are devoting their lives to Allah. Do not say you are my Shia, say you are my Mu'ib, lover. But I even ask this question, somebody who loves such a person will walk their way, mana. Imam Ali alayhi salam has said in the, the Shia, describing his Shia, Ruhbanun fil layl. They are devotees in the night time where they spend with their Lord part of the night. Usudun fin nahar. Lions in the day. Meaning courageous for Allah in whatever they are doing. So when the Prophet says, Inna Ali wa Shiatihi min al Faizin, that indeed Ali and his Shia are of the victorious, it is those who walk the way of Ali. It is those who engage in the struggle. We have to not allow ourselves to remain stagnant. Do not allow ourselves to take things for granted and think that Shia, this means anyone who is labeled a Shia. How can it be when a, if somebody is simply living like a nutcase, but he or she is defined as a Shia? They walk the opposite way of Ali in practice, but because they are Shia, they'll be victorious. How? You can have, and this is how we need to open our vision. You can have somebody who is from the Ahlul Sunnah, who respects the Ahlul Bayt and actually lives the way of Ali. This person is more of a Shia in the definition of the Prophet than somebody who is labeled a Shia but lives not like the follower of Ali. This is the Haqiqah. Do not be fooled. So we have to reanalyze ourselves to be because none of us would not like to be classified as a non Shia when in front of our holy Imam. We would want to be of those who live and walk the way and the same path. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In the Quran, elsewhere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to the hawa in Surah Al-Ma'idah, كُلَّمَا جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَ الْأَنفُ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَ أَنفُسِهِمْ The prophets would come and what they would come with would be opposite to what people's souls desire. Our souls desire chilling. We desire tosha, maja, no work, relaxed mana. Prophet comes and says to you and me, you have to work hard mate. You have to start fighting your desires. You have to start making changes in your life. You have to start this and that. The human being doesn't like moving out of the comfort zone. In our homes, we like to sit on the same sofa in our homes where we sit. We like our remote control just where it is with all the buttons that we can even move the curtains with it now. Man. We like everything the same, our plate here, our chutney here, our drink here, everything has to be in place. We don't like any change. The human being has to come out of the comfort zone to move closer to Allah, otherwise it will remain stagnant. So the prophets would come and teach man how to make this change and this would go against what their nafs wants. So what does Allah say in the Quran? فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبُوا وَفَرِيقًا يَكْتُلُونَ So a group of them were belied and rejected and a group of them were killed and slayed. Elsewhere in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fires a three-pronged arrow into our hearts with this verse. He says, Afara'ayta man ittakhada ilahahu hawa. Have you not seen, have you seen him or her who takes their God? 
who takes their desire as their God, on Yawmul Qiyamah, when we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say to Allah, Allah, I was a muwahid mana, I was a follower in you, monotheist. Our hawa, our desires will come as if in a court case and stand up and say, Objection, sir. Did you not take me as your Lord? This is the problem. That when we follow our desires as if we are taking it in place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we follow our desires which are illicit, when we are not put in balance in our faculties and we act, we are taking our hawa as our God. This is grave. This is too heavy, man. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, Afara'ita manitakhada ilahu nawa.